I'm going to explain five reasons why you're not improving. And it's important to know the reason because if you know the reason, you can find a solution to your problem. Some of the things I'm going to explain are well known by many. The others are going to actually shock you. One more thing, like this video, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's start with the first and the most obvious reason. You are lazy. Let me say that again. Yes, you're lazy. And I know this is not news. You already know that. But I will teach you how to use this laziness to actually help you learn better. Of course, I'm not saying that being lazy is a good thing because being lazy can stop you from learning English because you may not want to put in the effort to practice and study regularly. Learning a language needs regular practice and laziness can make it hard to see any progress. Now, I'm not saying to you stop being lazy, study four hours a day, no. I'm talking about you, the ones who do not want to even spend 20 minutes daily. You can be lazy the other 23.40 minutes a day, but those 20 minutes with the right tools and the proper guidance, you will be able to learn up to 400 new words a month. I'll explain these tools in my next video. It's okay to be lazy, just give me 20 minutes a day, all right? So stop being that lazy and get to work. My next two points might actually shock you. Now listen, I get these questions a lot. Sometimes I share with you some tools, some books and so on. And the first question I get, um, is this app for free? Um, can I talk to another person for free? Um, honestly speaking, being stingy can stop learning. Stingy is like when you don't want to spend money because it might mean not getting the necessary things to learn a language. Let's say like courses, books, proper apps, and so on. Of course, there are good free tools out there but I don't believe you can learn English 100% for free. I'm just saying invest 20%. It is true that there are a lot of resources out there that are free. Let's say you have amazing YouTube videos. Um, you can learn grammar on your own. You can learn daily habits and so on. But what if you have a question? If you don't understand something, who is going to answer that? Uh, another way, many of you want to improve their speaking but don't want to invest in an app or a course. Of course, you can talk to another learner. But remember, that person is also a learner. So who is going to correct your and that person's mistakes? And I'm not saying you have to pay an arm and a leg. You can go on websites like italki and where you can find affordable group lessons and you can also find affordable one-to-one -one lessons and also I'm sure in your city or your region there are affordable classes. You don't have to pay 100 euros per hour. And if you say, Oh no, I don't have that kind of money. I don't believe you, okay? For example, do you eat out? How about instead of going out four times a month, you go three times a month and pay for that course with the other time? What about you stop buying coffee outside? I'm so sure if you want to find the money, you will. And I'm not saying spend hundreds of dollars or all of your budget just a tiny amount to fill in the missing gaps in your learning experience. 
the third point will shock you. The problem is you study too much. Yes, I said it. I said it. I know all teachers will encourage you to study more and more and more. Not me. No, no. And let me give you an example. Um, I have this student, a doctor, and he's very smart. The guy would study English every time he had the chance. After work, before work, going to work. Um, at night, instead of relaxing, he would watch a series, another one, after that, a movie. Now, you would think this guy's English got much better and he was much happier. Actually, it's not 100% true. While his English did get better, my student felt really bad. He felt horrible. Every time he watched a show, he encountered many new expressions that he didn't know. And he started to feel very frustrated. I study like, what, like six, seven hours a day? Why is it that I don't understand everything? Why don't I sound like a native speaker yet? And I had to explain to him that the reason of his frustration, um, actually, there were a couple of reasons for his frustration. The first thing was sometimes he was learning British English uh, because he was watching, um, I think, The Crown or like, I don't remember the name of the TV show, but it was British English. And then another time he was learning American English and another time he was learning uh, Australian English. So he was like trying to learn three languages at the same time. And trust me when I tell you this, I do not know 90% of British slang and I don't care and I don't feel like I have to. If I, and not just me, meet any native speaker, they would know common words like, you know, I don't know, like Scottish English, like we and lassie and so on. But if one of those people talked to them and gave them, I don't know, like some idioms, they will not understand it and they wouldn't feel frustrated and they wouldn't think that they don't know English. It's just you need to choose one that you're going to learn. For example, I teach American English, all right? North American English. And um, it, let's say if you're studying for IELTS academic, then you need to learn academic English words. You don't even need to know the slang. So make sure that you know exactly what you're studying and don't bite more than what you can chew. Now follow this. You work eight to 10 hours a day. You drive to work, you take care of your family, you have many other things on your mind, things to do. Then you sit down to study for two hours. Believe it or not, after 30 minutes, you have reached your limit. The other two hours or three hours or whatever are just a waste of time and at some point torture. Because if you're sitting there and you're tired and you're reading or listening or whatever you're doing, you're not learning, you're just reading. And that will not help you improve your English. So make sure that you study effectively and in a smart way, not a lot. There's a huge difference. Fourth problem, setting unrealistic goals. Sometimes I get this message. Hey, can you help me study for IELTS? I need to take this exam next month. My score is 5.5 and I need a 6.5. Excuse me, you want me to teach you six months worth of material in one month? Do you think you're Chuck Norris? Because I got news, you're not. 
Now, being unrealistic when it comes to your goals can make learning very hard. Because if you set goals that are too difficult to achieve, this can lead to frustration and giving up. And we do not want to do that, okay? We need to have tiny baby steps and feel proud of ourselves. So, if you need to take or pass an exam, look it up online, see what people advise. If you are going to give a presentation in November, don't wait until October 31st to start. Plan ahead of time. Try to predict realistically the time you need to succeed and to learn at your own pace. This is, this is something mature, okay? All right, we came to the last and fifth point. If you weren't doing any of these things, then probably you are impatient. Yeah. That's a thing. What does it mean? Well, being impatient can make it hard to learn. Because learning a new language takes time. Let me give you this example. Imagine if you want to lose 100 kilos. Hmm? And then you stop completely eating for a week. You might end up in a hospital, but you will not lose that weight. It's the same for English. Learning a language takes time. And if someone is impatient, they might get frustrated and not want to keep trying. And this is really difficult. You need to keep yourself motivated. Let me throw in some stats there. Um, the Common European Framework for Languages, it's called the CEFR, provides a rough estimation of the numbers of hours required to achieve different levels of proficiency in a language. For example, to progress from a beginner level, that is A1, to an intermediate level, B1, it is estimated that a learner needs 200 to 350 hours of study. Again, effective hours of study where your brain is actually absorbing what you're learning. If you study effectively half hour per day, then you need 400 to 700 days. Remember that, okay? And it's the same for reaching an advanced level that is C1. It may take about 700 to 1,000 hours of study. That being said, you need to remember that you are a unique creature with a unique learning ability. So stop comparing yourself to others, okay? If my best friend succeeded much faster than me, I might be better at math, okay? So don't compare yourself to others. The only question that you should be asking yourself is the following. Am I better today than I was yesterday? This is all that matters. If you improved, if you learned three more words, then you should be proud of yourself. You are winning. And if you're not, then you need to check what you're doing wrong. Thank you for choosing me as your teacher. My name is Marwa, aka Miss English Teacher. Now, I bet you feel very motivated and ready to study a bit more. So, go ahead and take this quiz right here.